Good morning, everybody. I'm Rushad Mistry, and I'll be discussing about ultrasonic range sensors today. So the learning outcome for this session are you'll list, you'll be able to list features of ultrasonic range sensors, and you'll also be able to enumerate applications of these ultrasonic range sensors. Now, from recalling from where we left off, we had an extensive discussion on what are the different types of range sensors, what is the definition of range sensing, uh, how uh, ranging is measured using time of flight, and um, now obviously the further conclusion of this particular topic is we discuss one of the most widely used range sensors, those are ultrasonic range sensors. Now if you can see in the figure on the left, I have one of the most uh, common range sensors which is ab um, available for all laboratory experiments and other stuff. And even industrial grade sensors are basically manifestations of these sensors, only that it's more ruggedized uh, than what we use in the laboratory. So these sensors typically measure time of flight of a pulse of ultrasonic sound through air or liquid in, a, in order to measure distance. Uh, they are available with ranges from a few centimeters to meters, and they typically have an analog output which is proportional to the distance of the target. Um, it, if they are digital, they typically have an onboard ADC which converts the analog signal into the digital signal. Uh, we have four um, of these particular sensors in the lab and these are actually sharp sensors and they are quite good and students have used it in the past for various uh, projects and experiments. So uh, recalling again, how would you measure ultrasonic time of flights? It's similar to any time of life measurement that you can have. So in this case, uh, a direct source of energy is transmitted by the sensor and it is bounced back from the target and then the range is estimated based on the time of uh, arrival of the signal um, measured either in the form of phase shift or the intensity of the signal. So these are the most commonly obviously used techniques for time of flight measurement. And the reason obviously ultrasonic sensors typically are used and uh, also time of flight measurement is because uh, it's easy, there's easy availability and these are low cost and these are very easy to interface. That's why ultrasonic range sensors are what is one of the most preferred range sensors for several applications. Uh, then how does it uh, typically work? So construction typically includes one ultrasonic transducer and then the ranging module and the electronics. I, I mentioned this in the past that the range and even the accuracy significantly depends upon the onboard electronic circuitry, the signal processing circuitry. So uh, not just the transducer which is important, in most modern sensors, especially all modern digital sensors and smart sensors, the onboard circuitry is, is as much important as the quality of the main transducer. The control circuitry activates uh, the transducer, then the receiver is, uh, remember the receiver is deactivated for a short period of time in order to prevent a false detection. Um, due to residual transmit signal, which, which is called as a ringing actually. Then the re received signals are conditioned and processed to account for noise and attenuation. That's why I say every signal that returns has some sort of an electromagnetic noise, and hence all good ultrasonic sensors, as a matter of any sensors, will have some sort of signal processing in order to uh, eliminate that noise and uh, give the most accurate reading as possible. So it's a very simple setup. Um, uh, let me reiterate it that the onboard control circuitry is what clearly defines this uh, sensor. So whenever you check the specifications of such sensors, apart from translucent specifications, make sure you look at the control circuit specification um, and, and give it as much importance as the translucent specifications. Okay. Then, um, continuing with obviously the process, the control circuitry activates the translucent like a re receiver gets deactivated to prevent false detection and then the received signals are conditioned and processed to account for noise and attenuation. So that's the process which is used for uh, the uh, measurement operation. Now, where can you find application of these uh, for our laboratory projects? I would just want you to think over it and um, a hint for you is if you actually have bought a car recently then probably you have one. Now, yeah, most, most parking sensors are what typically these sensors. Now other than that, see if you can come up with some uh, uh, very classic applications of um, uh, ultrasonic sensors and see what you can use these particular sensors in laboratory projects. So when we come back, we'll try to have a discussion on applications. Now, uh, continuing from where we left off, remember, um, 
I, I mentioned this that if you actually have a car you probably have an ultrasonic sensor which is basically a parking assist sensor so it's one of the, one of the most widely used sensors when it comes to parking assist the range of applications of ultrasonic sensors is very diverse it's one of the most widely used sensors and the most common application obviously is object detection so ob object detection in um, um, factory automation in robotic uh, robotics is by far one of the most common applications when it comes to ultrasonic range sensors so in this particular case the transmitter transmits a signal the signal bounces off a target and then it can detect the presence of an object or the absence of an object and then it can th this part is a part of a larger control system then which can take a decision on what exactly has to be done so presence of objects uh, and absence of parts typically is on a moving conveyor for example is one very classic application of ultrasonic range sensors the other obviously is to actually estimate the distance uh, we say it's a range sensor so one of the the obvious application is actually to measure the range of an range of an object now in ultrasonic applications we typically use sound waves in the ultrasonic frequency range and uh, it's th this is preferred you, you have to understand because the circuitry is significantly simple for sound as compared to light sound travels at a speed which is several several times less than that of light 3 lakh or 300,000 kilometers per second as against let's say 340 meters per second. So uh, the thing with sound based systems is you can get a very high resolution um, when in very uh, with reasonable you can say electronic sophistication. If you're looking at any light bit application the so level of sophistication is just several times more than what you can expect in any sound based application. And uh, that's why it's one of the most widely. Remember, this is but the range here is very limited. In most applications, the range is not more than several meters. So it is few millimeters to a uh, few meters is typically the range when it comes to ultrasonic. Sound waves obviously larger, but ultrasonic is typically limited to a, a few meters. So measuring distance is, like I said, one of the major applications for ultrasonic range sensing. Uh, I, I, I mentioned this before. The applications are actually tremendous so like there's this the, there can be an entire session on what the applications of range sensors are so if you have to just do a summary of this um, in mobile robotics typically position estimation is what you use ultrasonic range sensors for so uh, this is actually used in localization and if you don't have a global system of localization then ultrasonic sensors can be used to in order to estimate the position of the robot in, in terms of some sort of a local coordinate um, Collision avoidance is again a very, very widely used, um, you can say, application uh, of ultrasonic range sensors. And this is not just in mobile robotics, it is used in other, uh, in, uh, in uh, vehicles and automobiles as well today. But mobile robotics, you can say, is the first case where collision avoidance was introduced. And ultrasonic range sensors are significantly better than, say, infrared range sensors when it comes to colli collision avoidance. So it is found wide application in automation, automobile and logistic applications. Another, uh, this thing is motion detection. In security systems, um, which typically are, are used in uh, homes nowadays, uh, they are typically either passive infrared and an alternative uh, transduction obviously here is ultrasonic uh, sensors. And these will detect motion of objects and then a security alarm can be set off if some, let's say an intruder is detected. So that's very typically an application of ultrasonic range sensor. But uh, let me tell you that in, in mo motion detection, especially security systems, passive infrared are uh, preferred over ultrasonic range sensor. Whereas in industrial auto automation, obviously we prefer ultrasonic range sensor. Then other industrial op uh, application, like I said, collision detection, like uh, the, the various, you can say, colli collision detection is a very generic term. The same concept can be actually used to measure level or depth. So ultrasonic range sensors have been used extensively to measure level or depth, especially non-contact type. If, if you're using contact type, then um, a potentiometric arrangement through a lever arrangement can be used. But otherwise, even depth measurement and level measurement in wider range of process engineering, ultrasonic range sensors find application. And these typically include like even in paper print industry, like if I have to generalize uh, industrial domains, then uh, they find application in paper and print, uh, in textile industries, plastics, packages, and metal working in order to um, uh, identify gaps between two parts. And th there are several applications, like I mentioned, for ultrasonic sensors. Um, coming back again to automobile, we, uh, I mentioned your parking assist 
is one of the classic example that you can find when it, uh, for ultrasonic range sensors. Typically in the rear bumper there will be at least four sensors. Uh, you, can, uh, you can add to it by adding a camera but parking sensors can get the job done. So they will estimate the distance of that particular object and then they will give some sort of an auditory warning which increases in frequency as you approach that particular object. So the, the here the, uh, one question arises should we call them as uh, uh, range sensors or proximity sensors? Yeah, they do detect proxim proximity but they, since it's not a fixed threshold and they do estimate the range of that object to a certain level, it's, it's fair enough to classify them as uh, range sensors as well. And collision detection is also one application that um, will come in automotive, uh, um, that in cars, in order to estimate the distance of a car which is in front of you. So that is one application of range sensors which is going to be the case. It also will be used to range the distance of the, uh, the car which is in front so that you can maintain a certain distance of your car from the other car. And it is going to find extensive application when it comes to autonomous driving. Defense obviously is one area where ultrasonic sensors find wide applications. And um, I definitely urge that you read the Mechatronics Handbook by Bishop. It has a dedicated chapter for sensors, and it's, it's definitely a worth read. For some introductory information about the same, uh, Mechatronics by Bolton. Um, introduction to Mechatronics by Bolton is also a very good read. Chapter 2 is dedicated, obviously, to sensors only. Thank you. And we'll continue with the discussion on other types of sensors in the next session.